Hi everyone, Nick here and today feel that glorious spring sun on your face. Winter is over. Winter is done. I repeat, winter is finished. I'm going to be taking you guys on a bit of a walk around the woodland now, uh, explain what we did this winter, rolling into springtime, some of the upcoming things for H3B. So to whistle stop through this, um, a lot of it involves thinking about where the sun is. The sun is over here, it starts way over here and in the summer months that the track is slightly different across the sky than in the winter. So what we've done is taken out a couple of these key pieces of hazel, uh, kept them rather than just using them for firewood to retain um, some of the path edges and help to zone people. Zoning is obviously an important uh, conservational technique used in the UK. Um, then what we're trying to do in these kind of margins is help the, the growth coming through so that you've got that shrub, herb, understory, canopy, which are the four key parts that uh, to make a woodland. Um, the next thing we did this winter was we rolled into finishing the orchard. Finally, our little orchard is finished. So you can see these lovely apple trees and plum trees are now fully in. Um, big, big thank you. Big shout out, big thank you to Chew Valley Trees. Okay, so Chew Valley Trees have helped us to um, complete our orchard, which has been a project which has been something like, I don't know, four or five years in the making now. Okay, so that's that. And then what we'll be getting onto is putting in this path here. We'll be using recycled um, scaffold boards retained with uh, naturally made pegs sourced from the undergrowth here to create a gentle set of stairs rising up. You can see this is never going to get much sunlight because of the track of the sun. So this is the ideal place to put that path up the side to the composter and along uh, for the orchard here. Right, so that pretty much covers up the orchard. Then we're moving into the next area of the here. orchard, coming through to this section here. What you're then going to find is we have some years ago completely cleared out this slope that was just pure scrub uh, and we planted up all these teeny tiny little trees which are now doing really well um, absolutely buzzing i can't believe how well this is all coming back to life it's just keeping on top of the amount of weed suppression that happens in here and maintaining light levels they've all got space to grow some of these were planted by primary school children i should also add uh, local primaries. Um, the orchard has had a hell of a lot of work. Big thanks to the Invictus Choir uh, and, and the whole veteran community really for their massive contribution to everything we've been doing down here and for believing in, in what we're doing and what we're achieving. Thank you very much. Right, moving on. One of the very trickiest parts of this winter has been keeping these paths dry and usable for the amount of footfall and work that's been going on. So moving on through the woodland, one of the other key jobs has been um, the upkeep of the stream bed, which in previous years past has become really, really um, kind of clogged up with uh, debris, detritus, leaves. Shovel, very dirty wheelbarrow. So I've been in here wearing my amazing new wellies from... Uh... So here is the, uh, the offending Ooh! equipment. That then goes into here, gets loaded in, and then goes on a trip along this path uh, down to its final destination where it gets used to rebuild the path. I could just see and hear there are signs of spring everywhere here in the woodland. Magic. Okay, so that brings us into here where we are actively rebuilding this whole stretch of riverbank from scratch using detritus that's being brought down every winter um, through the stream bed. So it's a really, really positive way to just reuse what's already there. Um, to redefine the actual bank edges, we've felled out some of the poorly English elm and then laid them on their side to recreate these, uh, these path edges. It's just such a nice way to do things. Um, from a conservation point of view, you know, you're not bringing in anything that's not already there or that the woodland had, hasn't already provided for itself. This area here, you can see that is all still yet to be made up uh, ground in, in that kind of gap there. This is all thanks to, again, all the volunteers and the help we've had uh, through our Woodland Warrior programme. Just the sheer amount of work has been astonishing. Biggest fundamental changes we've had to make to our business as a um, direct result of COVID just before that, I just wanted to mention that we've planted nearly a thousand trees now in all across the whole project. Um, it's just been amazing and, and continuing year on year to just improve, come back, see new plant, flora and fauna species here in the woodland. So we're going to head up the stairs now. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. 
Okay, here we are, up the stairs. Whoo! So one of the most important things we did was take down the old cabin, which sat on this site here, uh, and then rebuild it uh, properly this time, not just out of recycled materials, uh, which managed to somehow stand for like six or seven years. Um, and we rebuilt it far better, safer, uh, and with the extension of this non-habitable living space, this veranda on the outside, which is act so this will allow uh, these boys and girls to actually come up this ramp safely up the side here. So if I take you on this journey, okay, round the veranda and into what will be the all new cabin. This will provide re veteran respite weekends for up to 30 veterans and their families a year, which is absolutely incredible under our Woodland Warrior program. Massive, massive thank you to the um, Veterans Foundation and for all the other charities that have donated, helped out. This has been done like a massive DIY SOS. I've had so much help, I can't begin to claim the um, credit for this thing. This has been an enormous, enormous project. It's been very taxing for me. I've never project managed anything in my life. Uh, very much looking forward to the official opening in little over a month time. Um, and uh, yeah, just buzzing to be able to offer this to our uh, wounded, injured and sick community. The other awesome little bit of news is that the parachute managed to survive the winter once again. Whoosh. So the camp does sadly look like a bomb's hit it still, um, but that's always gonna be that way all the time that you're trying to build something from nothing. You know, we're just really, really looking forward to seeing people in here again, you know, having groups in here, being able to spoon carve and forage and wild cook and do all the stuff that you know we're, we're really about at our at our core um taken on the use of a new woodland the other side of the valley there is a youtube channel which we've started you can go and check that out if you haven't already um yeah it's just, so much has happened um fundamentally sadly we lost the kindergarten to covid so as a result um that's really what forged us to take the, the opportunity to, to go for it and to think, right, well, how else can we provide more for the veteran community? What else can we be doing? Um, and that cabin is totally the right thing to do, is the right answer. So yeah, very, very exciting times ahead. Thank you for supporting our journey. Um, if you haven't twigged already, something's been happening to my face throughout this uh, video. <laughs> Gotta have a sense of humor, guys, it's Monday. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing some faces for real around the fire pretty soon. Bye for now.